Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm doing week four of my 2023 reads. This week I reread a favorite, picked up a bunch of uh, pretty new releases that are really, really great, and then I did DNF one as well. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. So first, my reread was the audiobook of Texts from Jane Eyre by Daniel M. Lavery, narrated by Amy Landon and Zach Villa. This is an audiobook that my husband, Sush, and I tend to re-listen to every year, and we find it so funny. Uh, we only listened to it maybe a couple of months ago, but we were just in the mood to re-listen to it. So we did, and it was just so great. Um, if you've been around my channel, you've probably heard me mention this before, but this is basically just a bunch of of little uh, satires of conversations between uh, literary characters or authors um, and it is just really hilarious. Obviously humor is one of those things that is just gonna either hit or miss for you but this really hits for us and every time we listen to it we like it even more um, especially as we read more of the literary works that it is satirizing and it's just i love it i love it so much it's ridiculous and funny and the narrators do such an amazing job there it's just over the top ridiculous and I think it's excellent. Um, some of the like newer literary works, like The Babysitter's Club and stuff like that, maybe didn't work out as well for me. Um, but yeah, I just overall really, really like this. I gave it four and a half stars again. Um, and as a note, if you go and look this up, uh, you might see that it is listed under Daniel M. Lavery's previous name. So it's still the same book if it has this cover. Next, I read M is for Monster by Talia Dutton, which is a graphic novel that I heard about from Olivia Savannah at Olivia's Catastrophe, who I will link below. And this was so good. I'm actually gonna have a review for this up later this week, but basically I thought that this was such good kind of speculative fiction. I really loved all of the sci-fi and horror elements of it. Um, it wasn't too graphic at all, even though it is a little bit kind of Frankenstein adjacent, um, but it's this beautiful story of, um, of this this woman, Frances, who is a scientist and who lost her sister to a science experiment gone wrong, and she's tried to bring her back, kind of, you know, like Frankenstein's monster, zone her back up together. Um, but the person who comes back is not really remembering being Mara, being her sister. She's kind of finding herself very at sea, um, and it's all about that kind of experience of, of her trying to figure out who she is, trying to see if she can remember being Mara and realizing that she's got a lot of differences and trying to deal with those expectations. Uh, it is just a beautiful story. It really moved me and it's just really, really well written. So I gave it five out of five stars. And again, there'll be a review out later this week if you want to hear a little bit more about it. Then I read Alive at the End of the World by Saeed Jones, which is a poetry collection that I heard about from Becca at Read Becca, who I will link below. I always love trying out new poetry recommendations, and this one was so good. I have read um, Saeed Jones's memoir earlier, which was good, but I think I like his poetry even better. Um, this is filled with all the stuff that I like in poetry. It's about identity, it's about emotion and anger and grief. Um, you know, he lost his mother, and there's just so much of that that affects him, but also just so much kind of frustration and anger at what it means to be a queer black man in the US today. Um, I think that if you liked things like Don't Call Us Dead or um, American Sonnets for My Past and Future Assassin, this similarly has a lot of that kind of poetry about the way that black men are just so sidelined and dismissed and, and you know, treated as if their lives don't matter. And I just, I love that kind of political, social commentary, poetry, but there's so much in this that is so personal and identity-based as well. So I thought all of that was really great. He has great poetry. Sometimes it does go just a little abstract for my taste, but other than that, I thought this was excellent and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. 
Next, I read Not Your Valentine by Jackie Lau, which is a new uh, Valentine's themed holiday romance novella that I thought was just fantastic. Um, I really loved this one. This is about a woman who is very grumpy in general, kind of antisocial, and a year before uh, the events of this book was in a relationship where her boyfriend broke up with her in a restaurant by saying kind of, uh, it's not me, it's you, you're grumpy and I don't like you and somebody caught it on video and that went viral and since then since she's such a private person this has been really frustrating because people are constantly knowing who she is and pitying her especially because she's still single so she decides that she doesn't want to deal with that this valentine's day and she asks an old friend from high school who she still you know sees every once in a while to just be a fake boyfriend so that she can get through the valentine's day um rigmarole without people judging her for being single except that of course as they start fake dating it ends up uh, that they start having feelings for each other um i loved this main character she was just this kind of grumpy gruff exterior but kind of softy on the inside she hates everything to do with all of the you know valentine's day stuff hates like heart-shaped things and sprinkles and whatever um but she's just such a fun character and i thoroughly enjoyed this if you like holiday romances you should give this one a try i gave it five out of five stars and lastly, I did DNF one book, which was The One Who Loves You The Most by Medina. This is, I believe, either middle grade or young YA, and it is really doing some awesome things, but I ended up not quite gelling with the writing style. So this is a story about, um, about a kid who is trying to figure out who they are. They're dealing with a lot of issues of identity and especially with figuring out that they are genderqueer. Um, but there's also so much else going on in their lives. They are adopted and they know that they were originally from Central America, but you know, their mom is white and what that means for them, how they're, you know, how they learn about what their identity is, them not really knowing much about queer culture or queer identity, but kind of feeling out of place and also struggling to make friends and dealing with bullies at school. There's a lot of really great stuff in terms of what this book is doing. Um, I think that at moments too, the writing had like some really gorgeous lines. The, the first chapter was almost like poetry and I really liked that. But as we go through the book, um, the main character runs into a lot of different situations where they're learning about different aspects of queer culture, but also learning about different social justice things. And every time we came into one of those situations, we got like a little info dump so it felt almost like random PSAs or like mini um, intro to like queer 101 or social justice 101 um, that felt so out of place especially because I think these are middle schoolers and just suddenly they'd have like a, a paragraph talking about oh yeah because of gentrification and blah 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 and I'm like well I mean these are interesting topics and these are good but it just drew me out of the story every time that happened and so there was just this weird disconnect between what was going on with the characters and all of these sort of info dumps of, of sort of social justice issues. And I found myself not really able to stay engaged in the story. So I got about 25% in and then I stopped reading. I think that this one just isn't for me, but I also really like the project of what it's doing. So if you're interested in giving this a try, maybe it will work out for you. I know I'm a little bit more sensitive to info dumps at times than other people, so that's maybe just a personal preference. Okay, so that is everything that I read and DNF this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, you wanna chat with me about them, or if you've read anything interesting this week that you wanna share with me, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.